Well, to dig a little deeper into today's trends in the music business, I'm joined from New York by entertainment journalist Pavlina Oster. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me on. Now, Pavlina, between streaming, downloads, physical purchases, concerts, licensing, all these ways for artists to bring in multiple streams of revenue, but what are the most profitable ways? Right. So, you know, most people think that it's, you know, those, the physical sales and everything, and it's really not. I think the, the biggest way that uh, performers are going to be making their money is through touring. And it's, certainly that's something that's, that's been consistent. A lot of people may be thinking, well, why not digital? So why is it right. that touring is still the, the tried and true? Well, because that way, you know, like the audience is, you know, or like their listeners and everything are seeing them like in person. They're going to be buying merch. They're probably going to be buying more CDs there than they're going to be buying them in stores. Um, so, yeah, I think touring has been one of those uh, true and true things with musicians that uh, their, their fans just love to see them. Now, on the business side of it, we know that the UK's music chief says the industry is facing what he calls a perfect storm due to budget cuts. Right. Now, is this unique to the UK or is that being felt globally? Right, and it's really not that unique to the UK. It's happening in Canada and also in the United States. Um, what he was talking about were budget cuts in schools. And these school budget cuts are affecting um, really how music is seen uh, for the you know, future generations and everything. And it, it is happening globally. And it's not just, uh, just not, it's not something that's just happening in the UK. Now, as we look at some of these separate markets, which are the countries that have the most valuable music industries? Yeah, so that would be, you know, Finland, Denmark, uh, Sweden. Those countries, like, worship their classical musicians and everything. They really value um, music, music programs and all those kind of um, arts and, you know, fine arts in their schools while kids are growing up. So it's like, it's a, it's a big, big deal over there. And are there any other up-and-coming countries? I know that there seems to be a lot of focus you see in, in South Korea with, like, K-pop yeah. and other things. What are some of the other um, industries we should be keeping an eye on? Yeah, so, you know, the United States has always been a big one. Um, Germany, actually, is actually uh, kind of making its way up there. And Japan, like you said, are, are really up and coming. Now, what developments should we be keeping an eye on when it comes to the Chinese music industry? Right. So there's a lot of restric restrictions when it comes to, you know, the Chinese um, music industry and everything. Um, but as far as, like, they have such a wide audience, you know, billions of people, um, and they really are liking uh, what's happening in America and, and also in, in Japan and everything. It's very interesting. Now, technology, on the one hand, right. has, has expanded our access to music, which also, unfortunately, means more opportunities for piracy. How is yeah. the music industry working with tech companies to really try and eliminate this? Yeah, so it's really interesting um, how, how much this has gone down, actually, because of companies like Spotify, Pandora, Apple Music, all of those kind of, con or all of, those kind of companies are really um, lowering the rates of piracy just because people aren't needing to do it as much, you know, because you have Spotify, you can either have ads or you can, you know, pay the premium prices, and piracy just isn't needed as much. So these kind of companies and um, upcoming technologies and everything are really helping musicians in that way. Now, it's interesting. We saw in the package um, one of these issues of, of artificial intelligence being used, and you also have with streaming services. A lot of people are wondering when it comes to ownership, what are some of the legal issues that come with the digital age? Yeah, and you know, it's really interesting. I know a lot of people that have pirated things in the past, you know, whether it be music or, or movies even, and I haven't really seen any kind of legal action ever uh, be done on it, you know what I mean? So I don't actually know the, the legal actions um, that, are, that are taken, but I have never, um, I've never seen anyone, I guess, uh, had any kind of consequence with it. Now, in terms of these streaming platforms, certainly they're growing yeah. in popularity, but how does that translate into revenue, and, and how is that revenue split? Who's really getting the lion's share when it comes to streaming? Yeah, and it's really, it's actually really unfortunate with how, um, how little the musician is actually getting compared to like the company and, and all of the levels that it has to go through. Um, so that's actually, and actually a really interesting example would be Taylor Swift. She took all of her music off of uh, Spotify because you really don't make any money on, on Spotify or having it on any of those kind of um, platforms. But what I think is really interesting is uh, the middleman, I guess, like the, the, you know, they're not huge, but they're also not exactly, you know, small musicians are starting to create their own labels. And like those labels that they're creating, um, they obviously get to keep a lot of the money because they are the money that they're making and everything because they don't have to go through all those separate levels um, like some of the bigger artists do.
certainly one way to foster innovation. Thank you so much, entertainment journalist Pavlina Oster.